When we talk about cuts in the world of haute couture, we're usually talking about the cut of clothes, but there's also another type of cut that's integral to high fashion, haircuts, and of course, hair styling in general. Backstage at his autumn winter 2017-18 collection, Jean-Paul Gaultier is making sure there's not a hair out of place. You know what, it's too flat, it needs more volume. Why not do two braids for a little more volume? At Jean-Paul Gaultier, wheat appears in the model's hair, evoking the romance of late summer. Haute couture began in France in the 18th century with none other than Marie Antoinette, the original it girl. But the term haute couture and indeed haute coiffure only became trademarked in 1945. French Haute Coiffure is an organisation comprised of independent hairdressers who are commissioned to create collections twice a year and to get them seen around the world with the help of the group's other members. The name French Haute Coiffure is a huge plus because it evokes French Haute Couture and we benefit from that special status too in a way. Twice a year, French haute coiffeuse members from around the globe come together in Paris to discover new trends in hairdressing and to master the latest techniques in cutting and colouring. It's actually much more natural. It's the wavy effect, even the highlights are really natural. That's not quite what I've gone for myself, but what I'm doing is very natural. We're more inspired by what's happening in the street, women we see. I think it's really interesting to look for inspiration in normal women. We look at what they're doing, and then that becomes our inspiration. Just think of the classic bob cut. It's been around for a hundred years. These days it's often called a square or box cut. That's a wavy square cut. It's a look for women who like things that are a bit more relaxed. It needs to be sophisticated but natural. It needs to look like you just got out of bed. But in fact, a lot of work's gone into it. The best hairdressers are technical masters, using their skills to transform traditional aesthetic codes into something new and modern. It's about having a certain base, but then taking that elsewhere, destroying it, deconstructing it. You colour it differently, you texturise it. You often start out without knowing quite where it will lead. Just as haute couture inspires ready-to-wear, these hair artists influence what you see in salons around the world. What's new here is daring to use pastels, or pink, or green, or purple. We're applying makeup to hair, just like you do a face. We do a lot of work superimposing colours, lots of reds, oranges, for a flecked sort of look. All these colours are layered on top of each other. They cohabit. It's almost like they're paintings. The existence of French haute coiffure today is in no small part thanks to the support of a big cosmetics brand that invests hugely in events just like this. The aim? To get their products out to an even larger international audience. On stage in Paris, these hair artists have three minutes exactly to create their interpretation of the theme avant-garde. Hair shows like this are becoming more and more popular. Not least in Africa, where the cosmetics industry is expected to grow by 25% over the next five years. At the last International Festival of African Fashion, hairdressing topped the bill, with a live performance from the Ivorian hairdresser Dudonné Senato. Seeing that we're in a Tuareg country, tonight I wanted to turn these models into desert gazelles. I opted for braids made from extensions reinforced with metal tubes to give the whole thing a rigid structure. That's what gives the impression of horns and mane that you can see there. And hairstyling doesn't have to be limited to the head. It can sometimes be the main fashion event too. Muriel Kabile, originally from Martinique, started out as a stylist before moving on to hair. In 2014, she realized that hair was just as capable as cloth of dressing a body. I arrange the hair, I get it all together, then I plait it, I backcomb it. I use the same products I'd use in a salon. For me, it's a logical continuation of hairdressing. Quite simply, it brings together my two passions. Kabile is an ardent defender of natural black hair, 
the sort of hair typified by Angela Davis, a key figure in the American civil rights movement in the 70s. The politics surrounding black hair today comes from the fact that black women need to be accepted as they are, without having to transform themselves to look like someone else. Black women are fed up of relaxing their hair or using anti-frizz products. They need to stand up for their natural hair. Although that's not necessarily what I'm doing. I love volume, I love shape, I love going from one cut to another. It's part of who I am, quite simply. It's a continuation of everything I do. It's not necessarily about standing up for one specific thing. Kabile only works with synthetic materials. Straight hair is easy to source. Black Afro hair isn't. But through championing diversity in hairdressing, one day that could change. <laughs>